This is a chapter from Overshare, the Lynx.net story. Find the rest at overshare.lynx.net. I first found love in computers in 1981, when Mom brought home an Apple II Plus for our family. The computer never got tired of hanging out with me. I could entertain myself for hours with games. Then we got a modem and connected our computer to other computers through the phone line. Long before the internet became widely available, people set up BBSs, bulletin board services, where you could dial in and download a file or leave a message for the next person to dial up. I may have felt like a weird and lonely kid, but using these early networks, I could find other weird and lonely people to hang out with. I ran up some huge long distance phone bills in the mid 1980s when I discovered the Sierra Online BBS offered live text chat. In 1988, a friend loaned me his university internet account. Long before the web existed, I found text-only message boards on the internet called Usenet News Groups. On Usenet, people talked about all kinds of stuff you might never find in your local bookstore or newspaper. Drugs and sex and music. I was enchanted. In 1991, I raved about Usenet in my high school newspaper. But shortly thereafter, I was kicked off my friend's account, and I was stuck offline. Back then, you couldn't get an internet account if you weren't involved with a university or a defense contractor. I finally got my own access to the internet in 1993, when I enrolled as a freshman at Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania. Now I had ethernet in my dorm room. I could be online all the time. 24-7 access to the internet. In December 1993, I found an article in a paper newspaper, the New York Times. A writer, John Markoff, described a new part of the internet called the World Wide Web. And Mosaic, a web browser, capable of displaying text with images on the same page. Before the web, you had to type in arcane commands to summon information. Now, with the web, anyone could fill their brain with a mouse. A vast array of information is being made available in attractive, easy to use form and for free over the internet. In December 1993, there were maybe only 600 websites and you could surf the entire thing in like two weekends. I was inspired as I saw all these crude personal home pages so many people taking a moment to introduce themselves with a few photos and some basic personal information. I decided I would introduce myself to the web. So I put up Justin's homepage in late January 1994 with a picture of myself and some personal details and a few of my favorite links. I was completely enthralled by the early web. I surfed voraciously and built out my collection of weird, wild, and wonderful links on the World Wide Web. My sex links and drug links would become especially popular. I named my site Justin's Links from the Underground, after a Dostoevsky book that I hadn't read. Treat yourself to more of Overshare, the Links.net story. You can find too much information at overshare.links.net.